I've been thinking about the concept of quiet and what it means to how we think about black culture. And one of the ways that this concept manifests is in a moment in 1968 in the Mexico City Olympics. It's a moment that's been captured visually in an image that many of us know. This image of Tommy Smith and John Carlos on the metal podium when both of them thrust their fists in the air when the anthem starts to play. This is a moment that for many people represents the civil rights movement. All of that intensity and power and resistance, all of the ways in which people were pushing forward towards a new world, resisting some of the racism and sexism and other oppressions of that era. What most people notice when they see this image and what has been described is the way in which both of these men articulate all of the intensity and urgency of the various social movements of the 60s. And yet, what goes uncommented upon in this image is if you look closely, how both of these men have their heads bowed and one of them has his eyes closed. It's almost as if they are in prayer. What strikes me about this is how there's a balance between the intense political gesture of the protest they were making, and for sure it was a protest, as many of the athletes at the Olympics, some of them U.S. Americans, but some of them athletes from around the world, were using the Olympic stage as a chance to make a statement. But there's a balance between that and this intimacy, this almost gesture of their inner lives, that's reflected in the posture they strike. And why is it, for all of the people who've been moved by this image, that so few people have noticed, or at least commented on, this quality? That's what brings me to this question of quiet. One of the reasons it's so easy to miss the intimacy of Smith and Carlos's gesture is because of the common ways in which we come to think of black culture. Black culture is dramatic, expressive, loud, colorful, even resistant. Resistance has been such an important part of black movements for freedom. And so we have this common language of thinking about blackness through what one might call the public discourse. And it's this that so dominates one's thinking ab about black culture that leads to us missing what else might be there in Smith and Carlos's gesture. One of the things that goes missing in black culture is our capacity to think about the inner life. Our capacity to look at that image of Smith and Carlos and immediately imagine what their inner life is like. This idea of the interior is an important one. It's hard to define and describe, but in some ways, I think of the interior as that human reservoir of our fears, hungers, ambitions, desires, vulnerabilities, all of those things that make us human. But the interior is not defined by or driven merely by what's outside. The interior has, in some ways, its own sovereignty. And quiet is important as a term because it's distinguished from silence. Though commonly we tend to use the two terms as if they are synonyms, they're quite different, at least in the way that I try to think of them. Silence is the absence of something or the repression of something, the stillness of something. Quiet is different. Quiet can be expressive. It's a habit of being, a quality of inwardness, much more characteristic of the interior than silence. Quiet is expressive in the way that one can say a song or a poem is quiet. The architecture of a building is quiet, but one couldn't say that about silence. It is important to remember that quiet is about expressiveness, but an expressiveness that generates from somewhere inside from that wild, ranging, voluptuous inner life that we all have. Quiet is inevitable and essential in humanity. And in that way, it's different from the repression that's often characterized in silence. So if we come back to that image of Smith and Carlos with that concept of quiet, that notion of that wild, voluptuous, vibrant inner life in our minds, it's a little bit easier for us to see something more than only resistance, to see and imagine their hearts aflutter, 
it's easier for us to imagine a whole world of things that they might be thinking or feeling in this moment in addition to the express political message that they surely intended. And all of a sudden, this moment, which is already so powerful, becomes a little bit more powerful, a little bit more moving, as if we are seeing more and more of their humanity come into view. It stuns us how sublime they are, how beautiful these two human beings are. And we can see that humanity more richly. It is as if the concept of quiet and this notion of interiority allows us to see some of the human dignity that might be passed over if we only think of them through a discourse of resistance. And I think the idea of quiet could help expand how we think about many other aspects of black history, how we think about those iconic moments that so define for us the 19th and the 20th and the 21st century, how we read and think about black literature. Quiet is an invitation to go beyond resistance as a frame for thinking about black culture and to see and understand and explore that human dignity that is inevitable in all life. Quiet is essential in humanity. Quiet is.